there's been no one for so long. Who are you? Ray. Ray who? Realizing this movie came out over a month ago, but I'm still going to talk about it. Star Wars Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker. Directed by J.J. Abrams, written by Chris Terrio and J.J. Abrams, starring Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Adam Driver, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Anthony Daniels, and a whole slew of other fantastic people that we just love. Its 2020 Oscar nominations include visual effects, original score, and sound editing. Now, if you didn't know this, this is the 52nd nomination for John Williams for scoring a film. And he's won five Academy Awards. And the likeliness of him winning this is kind of slim um, because his rival is Hildur Gnadeter. I don't know how to say his I don't even know if I'm saying his whole name right. Anyways, he's already won two awards, uh, the Golden Globe and the Critics' Choice Award for the Joker. So uh, usually when that happens, it kind of leans into who's going to walk away with the Oscar. Who knows? We might be in for a shocker. Here's the hoping. Love John Williams. And if you didn't know it, he has a cameo in the movie. It's the first time he's ever appeared in Star Wars, which was freaking awesome. Uh, I didn't catch it the first time, but I definitely caught it the second and third time I watched it. This is the final chapter to the Skywalker saga. The Rise of Skywalker wraps up the new and messy, but entertaining at times, trilogy that started back in 2015. I feel like JJ did the best that he could considering Ryan Johnson's messy internalized version of Star Wars that we didn't need that derailed what JJ did with Force Awakens that was just jam-packed and was a rehash of what we've already seen. But look, I have my issues with this trilogy. Of course, we all do. But you want to know what my biggest issue with The Rise of Skywalker is? Better yet, the entirety of Star Wars? The fans. Look, there's no changing what we got. This is someone's take on what would happen in the Skywalker storyline, based within the confines of the mouse's demands, the mouse being Disney. All have an idea of what we would do with the Skywalker storyline. We talk about it, we spend hours, there's podcasts, millions of hours worth of podcasts talking about what they would like to see and what could have been done. And there's no changing it. This is what we've got, all right? And we have to learn to either fall in love with it or move on. We should just be thankful for what we've gotten this far. And if you go back and talk to those who watched the original trilogy in the theater, they never thought we would get what we're getting now. I mean, that's amazing. Like we need to take a few steps back Take a deep breath and appreciate what we're getting. Come on, <laughs> for the love of all that is good, let's just all stop being stupid, okay? Now, let's get back into The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Skywalker is fast paced and it's packed full of callbacks to mistakes that might have been made earlier in this trilogy. And it was done in such a way and happened so many times that it felt apologetic. You know, I'm sure everyone on set found it funny. And to a certain extent, I found it funny, but at times, more times than not, it kind of took me out of the film. <laughs> but I sort of appreciate that it was put in there. But I think that also says how just butthurt the fans got. A film shouldn't have to apologize. It shouldn't, it should not have to apologize. But of course, you know, whatever. Whatever, we're moving on. What did I like? What didn't I like? Well, honestly, I liked a lot and there wasn't a whole lot that I didn't like. And look, I could probably talk about this film for hours, so I'm just gonna tackle this in bullet point form the best that I can. Um, here pretty soon, we'll be deep diving into The Rise of Skywalker on the Expendable Opinion Podcast. So if you're not following us on there, make sure that you go and follow. Right in the beginning, we get the crawl, the opening credits crawl. It brought back that old school camp with impending doom and I loved it. You know, uh, Palpatine is back. His, he's announced his reign. You know, that also kind of leans into the whole fast pacedness of it is that this film is just an adrenaline rush. You know, it, it, there's so much packed in there and it's fun, but 
it felt like most lines were just exposition. We didn't sit on one thing for a very long time and it was just like from one thing into another, just boom, 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 boom. And it was a bit exhausting and overwhelming. It's a lot of film packed into like two and a half hours. That begs the question, should the movie have been 30 to 45 minutes longer, or better yet, should they have broken the trilogy format and made this a two-parter? I wouldn't have been upset over that whatsoever. I mean, I'm sure it's some traditionalists out there, I mean, you cough in the wrong direction in a film these days, especially in a Star Wars movie, and diehard fans are gonna flip out over it. Again, please stop being stupid. We all need to stop being stupid because Lord knows I complained a lot about The Last Jedi. Still do, but it is what it is and there's no changing it. And of course, I can't believe it's taken me this long to talk about it, but seeing Carrie Fisher on screen was haunting, but it was so, so sweet. Um, and they did it in such a reverent way. It took my breath away and, and it brought me to tears the first time that I saw her on screen. The third time that I saw it, it became very apparent to me that they had used, you know, previously shot footage. And I knew that going in, but the first time I saw it, it wasn't that apparent to me. It was just, you know, these static one-liners that were thrown in there and they wrote something opposite of it. But, you know, for what it is, these filmmakers have to be commended for it. It's a huge accomplishment. It was just nice to see the three main characters, Poe, Finn, and Rey, fall back into what they are originally built on, which got completely derailed in The Last Jedi. And that was kind of my main, you know, issue with The Last Jedi, is that there was no real growth with the characters. And for what it was, I felt like we reestablished who they were and as much as we could, we brought it back around and made a full circle with their characters. Like there was some growth and I appreciated that. I think it's important to care about the characters that are on screen and really know what's going on. Going back to the opening credit crawl and Palpatine being thrown into the mix. Freaking Palpatine. He was terrifying and it was so fun seeing him back. Just oh, he's so disgusting. It's like hands like deteriorating and he's on this weird life support thing. I know we can't, I know we can't change things, but the entire time that he completely restored himself, I was like, okay, there's going to be an awesome, awesome saber battle here between him, Ray and Ben. It's going to be so freaking awesome. It didn't happen and it's fine. It's fine. I'll get over it. It's fine, but it would have been. Oh man, Anthony Daniels, C3PO, so good. I had such a great time dying laughing at the C3PO moments. He brought his A game and I thought he was used perfectly in a way that him, C3PO and R2 were not used in the previous two films. Lando's screen time was oh so sweet. I've been wanting that, we, we've all been wanting that since The Force Awakens to see Lando back on screen, all the original characters on screen. When he said, give Leia my love, and Ray was like, why don't you give it to her? Why don't you give it to her yourself? Man, oh, talk about a gut punch. Yeah, Lando, where you been, man? Like, what's your deal? Like, why are you pushing people away? Eh, it's oh, so good, so good. There were so many moments in this movie that brought me to tears. You know, C-3PO's uh, near uh, what we thought, like, he was gonna die, like, you know, he was gonna be gone forever. Uh, I was like, oh my god. He turns around, and he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm just taking one last look at my friends. And it's like, oh my god, see, thank you, oh no! <laughs> but I honestly think the most heart-wrenching moment for me that I was, like, nearly sobbing was when Han showed back up. It's hands down my favorite scene in the movie. And not only was it written so well, but I took it as a sign off of a love letter to Carrie who brought such life to a, a strong, beautiful character that we all fell in love with. The performances given by Harrison Ford and Adam Driver in this scene, it's beautiful. So freaking powerful. Thank you, whoever came up with the idea that he should say, I know, because the minute that happened, that was just when floodgates are open and I was a mess. My popcorn was just soaked <laughs> in tears. Knights of Ren, um, worthless. <laughs> cool idea, but poor execution. What was their purpose? They weren't scary at all. I didn't feel threatened by them. And did anyone else notice that these peeps 
were standing on a rock and this aerial shot was going around them. Did it not feel like a 90s rock band music video to you guys? <laughs> Clearly, they were created uh, in the sole purpose to have some kind of comic spin-off and merchandise the crap out of them. But, I mean, honestly, if they're going to make money off of it, I think the real deal is to make them a band, a real band, and they go on a universal tour. Like, just do it. Knights of Ren. It's a sweet name. I could keep going on and on and on about this film. I think my biggest issue with Rise of Skywalker, better yet, the entire trilogy, since this is kind of the button to it all, is that I never did become invested in Rey. And that's no discredit to Daisy Ridley whatsoever. I think she did an amazing job, and there are moments that I felt deeply for her, but it was hard for me to become 100% invested in her. Um, I like her character, and but I was more interested in the characters around her, which sucks. Also, this is just too much film for the time that it was allotted for. It needed more time to air out and breathe. And after digging around the internet, uh, I'm under the impression that it might have suffered uh, from control being taken away from JJ, where he really wanted it to go. I could be wrong, but um, that's kind of the impression that I'm under. Regardless, this is a fun and an emotional roller coaster that I think did a pretty decent job of redeeming the trilogy. I have to give Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker a tub of popcorn that's extra salty because of all the haters <laughs> with a pack of Sour Patch Kids because, you know, they're first sour and then they're sweet, much like uh, the Star Wars fans, and a large blue raspberry and cherry slushy because, I don't know, kind of makes me think of lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> this Star Wars film made me feel like a kid again, and it restored my hope in the Star Wars universe and what's to come. But also, that's largely to thank to the Mandalorian and the child. Not Baby Yoda. Quit calling him Baby Yoda. He's known as the child. Okay? Okay. We're good on that. I'm sure you've seen Rise of Skywalker. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Let me know in the comment section down below. So if you like what I had to say, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more from Spillcorn, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out our podcast, The Expendable Opinion Podcast, where we'll be deep diving into The Rise of Skywalker and sharing our thoughts on it. My name is Miles Rice. This is Done Seen It, and you guys have a fantastic day.